In today's battle of blue-clad chads, we've got Boris Toddbringer facing off against a village. And of course, it's going to be Empire versus Warriors of Chaos. Let's go ahead and take a look. This one is from uh, Ladivan on Discord. And I definitely appreciate the chance to cast an Empire game. Boris, as mentioned, is going to be leading, leading the way. We've got Spearmen here, a couple of Archers, and the Silver Bullets. Amethyst Wizard plus Sigmar Suns, a couple of Halberds, Demogriff Knights, uh, yeah, Royal Alt of Griffites even. Great Cannon and some Reichsguard, just a nice balanced Empire build. Just really wholesome, well constructed. And then we get to this monstrosity, which is five Forsaken, a single Marauder. We've got two Dragon Ogres, including the Summoners of Rage, Lord of Nurgle, and two Zinchian Chariots plus Aeacold Hellbrass. So, uh, very interesting, actually. I, I kind of want to hate it, but I almost don't because like forsaken mulch most empire infantry uh they definitely don't trade great against great swords i mean they'll get a pretty good charge but then like kind of the armor piercing and anti-infantry and low hp takes over um but they they're also not great against shock damage no missile block chance but that extra speed means they can pressure missile infantry i don't know there's a lot of trade-offs here which is why i kind of actually don't totally hate it but let's see how they do forsaken gonna absolutely smash into this line of Spears and uh, yeah, Boris doing his best rear charge impression there. Cannons, of course, are going to be absolutely teeing off on these units in the back line, although really haven't gotten an insane amount of value so far. Right now, the Spears are just kind of holding. We've got the Reichsguard also. Uh, yeah, hopefully not getting caught flat footed. Yeah, it looks like they are going to start to pull back and away. It's probably the best thing to do is just avoid the Dragon Ogre, see if you could pull them into a bad position where you can support with the Halberds potentially. A little bit of Spirit Leech there on the Ch Chaos Chariots in the front line, which is definitely a good call. That low model count means they'll take pretty efficient damage from that. Helps get through the barrier also, so your infantry can actually start dealing damage to them um, as they kind of try and pull through there. But Boris also responds to the Chariots. Meanwhile, yeah, Reichsguard just uh, pulling back, kind of pulling around, just distracting right now. Not really giving an engagement to the Dragon Ogres. Again, really smart, nice play. Allows the Great Cannons just more time to work free more or less without having to suffer obstructions archers also punishing the black missile block here very cost effective considering how cheap they are i mean archers are just dirt cheap and incredibly poor units but have already almost paid for themselves shooting at just those forsaken there but uh, yeah certainly chaos is no slouch we see some forsaken starting to penetrate into the second line there go after some of these archers spikes guard hopefully we'll be able to stop them up to a degree but, uh, yeah, Royal Thorpe fights here getting caught flat-footed is a little bit painful. They were trying to pull back from those Dragon Ogres. Reichsguard do come support, though. They're going to get a nice kind of side charge, interrupting a lot of the unit models from actually getting in that fight. It does look like, uh, yeah, Zinch Lord peeled out of that engagement to come interrupt some more of these ranged units. But Silver Bullets do have line of sight and are able to get in some shots also on the Dragon Ogres. Boris comes to punish the weak and the... Well, the fights are able to pull away. Taking a look back at the front line, no surprises. Spearman getting absolutely smashed and crushed under meaty fists. But Sigmar Sun's holding the line. Halberds are providing kind of a secondary fallback as well. And the cannons so far have been able to stick to their guns and continue firing and generating value. One chariot, though, still alive. And Aeacold, of course, has taken no damage whatsoever. So... But just keep in mind, you know, as much as Empire is winning here, and they, they are doing quite a nice job in kind of dismantling and weathering the assault here, Forsaken are starting to pressure, and just the relentlessness of them is becoming a problem as they get in this backline area. Gonna start to mop up this cannon crew here, just chasing the Reichsguard around, just really a menace to civilized society. But uh, the Silver Bullets, though, Staying free and in a nice backline position have have really good lines of sight. Looks like they're finally going to suffer from chariot charge, but we'll see. The Dragon Ogres also, uh, yeah, Alter Perfites just cleaning up the one unit completely. Summoners of Rage managed to do some really good damage to the far side Reichsguard, but it's keeping them occupied and away from the rest of the battle here. Reichsguard in support of the Halberds are able to start cleaning up a lot of these Forsaken. They can also use their charge to come in and punish these chariots as well. So it's looking uh, pretty pretty good for the Empire, all things considered. As long as Boris escapes with enough HP, he's really going to be the key, obviously, to killing uh, Aeacold. So 
It's definitely got to keep him relatively healthy. Chaos, though, other than the Dragon Ogres, really doesn't have a great tool to punish Boris. So as long as he stays away from the Summoners of Rage especially, but just in general, and uh, hence, again, why the Reichsguard just and the Altar of Crypt Bites even kind of leading them around is uh, pretty good, even if the Altar of Fights themselves are continuing to just take damage and not really get that much great value. Um, as long as Empire can continue winning in other areas of the battlefield, Boris can continue carrying to a degree. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, in the late game, he should be able to deal with Aikold. We'll see. Aikold's definitely no pushover. Does not have the expert charge defense of Sigvald. Keep that in mind. Although he does basically have perfect vigor, so uh, the barrier... Yeah, it's definitely interesting. Should be, at least. Lots of fights there, getting poisoned perhaps a little bit by the Nurgle Lord, yes. And it, once again, rear charged by the summoners. But the rest of the battlefield is going great for the Empire, so it's really hard to criticize too much the distraction tactic there. Chariots are trying their best to still be effective, rear charging those Sigmar sons, but it's not wildly effective. And of course, unbreakable as they are, the Sigmar sons will continue fighting. See the shadow of Boris, there he is. Moving in to start striking, perhaps at village? Let's see. Nope, looks like he's going to peel back, try and finish the chariots first. It's smart, honestly. Smart and safe to just kill everything except village first. Again, as long as you get away with enough HP on Boris, handful of support units so that they can be distracting a cold as he's cycle charging. Recipe for success, excuse me, for sure, but the Summoners of Rage still being so healthy is definitely a problem. This Nurgle Sorcerer Lord also, they were, were able to feast a ton of value and just completely defeat the Royal Alto Crypt Fights, so let's see how this goes. We've got some Reichsguard here, still about half HP there. Sigmar Sons are now fighting Darth Aegold. And, uh, oof, they are going to pay a heavy price. For their faith in Sigmar, of course. Oof. And just the coolest attack animations, honestly. It really is a shame Shadows of Change turned out to be such a disaster because there are elements of it and of its update that are just incredible. But, yeah. <laughs> Village, OP, definitely a pain to deal with. A huge, huge pain to deal with. But has some of the coolest animations in the game. So does that make up for it? Hard to say. Anyway, Summoners of Rage starting to take a little bit of Archer Fire. They do have some Missile Resistance to try and shrug that off. But uh, here come the Reichsguard, the Halberd, Spearmen, Boris, all together now. In a beautiful surround, are able to pretty much get it done. I mean, we'll pull up the health bars here in just a second. It looks like a fleshy abundance is going to come in on Chaos side. Try and keep those Summoners of Rage healed up. They're just about heal capped. To be honest, so they definitely taken significant damage, and now they finally choose to unleash their chain lightning. Unfortunately for them, it does just kind of go off and uh, not really do a lot. Could have got a lot more favorable of contact on that. Certainly, it does do some damage, but not probably what the chaos player was hoping for here. Yeah, if it had like done that little circle in a little bit tighter and just rolled like double rolled this blob of empire inventory, that would have been very bad. And even still, balance power is showing against the Empire pretty significantly. Um, yeah, the these Summoners of Rage, as soon as Boris lands, really should just be countercharging him as much as possible, especially now the Aecold's interrupted the two Halberds from advancing. Now would be a pretty opportune time that once Boris is on the ground, to just issue an attack order on him and try and get his, in as much damage as you can, rather than pulling away to try and go after the Reichsguard. So all you're doing right now is just setting yourself up for a beautiful triangle charge here. Well... Yeah, there we go. Other Reichsguard, a little late to the message, but there you go. <laughs> At least the Triple Collapse will sue, and Boris, Double Knights, a little bit of Archer Fire in here as well. Isolated Summoners of Rage cannot possibly stand against this. They'll do good damage to the one Reichsguard, but yeah, immediately getting terrified. I say immediately, pretty quickly getting terrified away. And now Boris just has to kill these characters, so you know what that means. Time to fast forward. Well, I say time to kill the characters. He's got to finish the Summoners of Rage first. Then it's on to the Nurgle Sorcerer Lord, of course. 
who's going to try and get back to village, but gets caught by the Reichsguard, stopped like a criminal scum, and terrified away. So there you go. One character dealt with. Now the question is, a, can a cult stand against all of this? He does not have any barrier. Which I find interesting. Must be taking enough chip damage here and there over time to not get the barrier, but uh, yeah, he's starting to take some real HP damage. He's got 179 kills, but that Crush the Weak does reduce his melee attack, and of course he's anti-infantry. Rather than being anti-large, Boris having the mobility of the Griffin is absolutely massive. 70 charge bonus as well, plus he's an armor-piercing weapon strength. And, uh, yeah, you've also got the White Cloak of Ulrich. And no Crush the Weak, actually. Which would have been decently effective. I mean, Chaos has enough low leadership units that I feel like it's, uh... Yeah, it's useful here, certainly. I feel like it's useful in most matchups, to be honest. But, here you go. We'll watch Aeacold's telekinesis fight against Boris, just regular old Griffin animations we've all seen hundreds of times, thousands of times since Warhammer 1. A good old reliable Boris. That Griffin gives him such a distinct advantage here, it's not even close. Yeah, village gets sent, gets sent packing and my heart is filled with pride for the Empire because just a beautiful replay. Honestly, I don't, again, don't totally hate what the Chaos player did here. It's certainly risky. I'll give him that, but um, it could potentially pay off. I think you could lessen the risk here by, of course, just cutting even like two of these Forsaken and going with some more Marauders to give you some extra width here would be quite beneficial. You know, maybe some Warhounds, chase some routing units off, or, you know, Marauder Horsemen for Skirmish and same thing, chasing routing units. Some kind of extra mobility here, because a lot of these Empire units ended up coming back and contributing. But uh, it's definitely interesting, yeah. Reichsguard, yeah, really good value. Yeah, 2300 value, 14,000 damage dealt on a Reichsguard is absolutely beautiful. It definitely makes me happy. Royal of Griffites, despite getting punished pretty hard, we're still able to return a really nice amount of value, which is uh, pretty good there. Boris, of course, carries hard with a 3,000. 1,000 also on the Silver Bullets, so fairly good overall. Empire State Troops trading reasonably cost-effectively for the most part. And then both the Archers, yeah, 617 on a 350 Archer unit is just fantastic. Uh, the Summoners of Rage also, and the regular Dragon Owners both managed to pay for themselves in the cab fighting. Some of that's going to be a little bit overinflated because of healing. Um, I guess there wasn't that much healing on the cab side uh, for the Empire, but a little bit more so on the Chaos side here. The Chariots are okay. I don't love where Chaos Chariots are at right now, especially in land battles where units tend to be braced or uh, at least have more opportunities for bracing. It just doesn't they don't work quite as well as they do in, say, Domination. Forsaken's an interesting choice. Village is... Or, sorry, Aeacold. Oof, yeah. That's a that's an oof. Uh, Aeacold is always going to be good in this matchup, I think. I, like, I wouldn't ever argue against taking him, but it does kind of deprive you of some width, which is certainly something to consider in this matchup, potentially. But let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Love me some classic Empire plays, so thanks again to Ladavan for sending that one in, and... Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you like this sort of content, like it, share it with a friend. I certainly appreciate it. Thanks again. See you next time.